What's poppin', ladies and gentlemen, and others, of course. In this tech tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to port your um, your Switch eShop games from the original firmware to your custom firmware. And uh, this allows you to run mods and all of that. So without further ado, let's dive on into it. Okay, starting off, we're going to boot into Hakate. And instead of launch, you're going to want to do the reboot. And then you're going to want to select original firmware. Now, this is so we can, um, after you downloaded your game from the eShop, you know, that you bought, um, you boot up into the original firmware. And then you're going to want to play it at least once. Um, I don't know why, but for some reason, uh, DBI doesn't work correctly if you haven't at least saved the game um, once. So for this tutorial, um, I'm going to be using, uh, Slender the Arrival as an example, because I haven't yet ported it to the custom firmware, or at least I don't have the file to port it. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and launch this. Okay, so basically, as you can see, I'm playing through a little bit of it. And what we're going to want to do is get to a point where we can save. Okay, so I've already played through this a little bit. So what I'm going to want to do is like collect an item in the game or whatever to trigger an autosave. And uh, once this completes, we're going to be able to um, boot into uh, custom firmware. And then we're going to be able to transfer transfer the file via dbi okay now that that's done in the in the game uh triggered an autosave we can go ahead and close out of this game because we're not really going to need it all right now that we're booted up into custom firmware you're going to want to hit the the right shoulder button and click on a game and keep holding it until you see this menu now um now you're going to want to click into dbi And then you're going to go down to where it says MTP um, Responder. This will allow you to transfer. Okay, now I got it hooked up to my PC. And um, from this point on, you're going to want to let it load a little bit. Okay, now we're on the PC side of things. And... Um, as you can see, this is the Switch folder. And you're going to want to go to installed games. Now you're going to see this huge list of things. And usually the larger files, you're going to want to use the, the, um, uh, the, the NSP file instead of the folder. Cause sometimes it gets finicky, but because slender, the arrival, it's only like a gigabyte in size. Um, you can use the folder, but um, I've tried this before with like something like Dying Light and it doesn't work if you use the folder version. It, it splits up the file really weird and I'm, I'm not one for compiling, um, you know, switch games in to get them in a working state because, um, it's just a giant pain in the butt. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, you're going to want to... Um, copy the NSP file and you you play it first just just to be safe just to make sure it registers on the console and the reason I do is because I recently transferred um, my Nintendo account to my modded switch and it exists on the original firmware and then I made it my primary console so that's why I'm guessing that I have to play all of the games first but if you've had your modded unit for a while and, um, what am I trying to say? If you had your modded unit for a while and you've played all the games on the original firmware, I think you'll be okay. And DBI will, um, will transfer it properly anyway. Um, but yeah, uh, we're going to wait for this to finish transferring and, um, I didn't actually get into the reason why it's it's important 
or at least for me to transfer games from um the original firmware to the the custom or emunand as um it's called also system cfw it's it's due to the fact that you can't really mod games on the original firmware you can't um it also allows you to like transfer saves or like get save files from the internet um uh, but but the the key takeaway here is it allows you to mod games that you weren't able to mod before, and sometimes you know with those tin foil shops they don't always have everything. So um, this this is a way to to do it without piracy. Which if you already have a game you know and and then you happen to to uh find the file somewhere that's all right but this is this is a better way of doing it okay so now um i'm gonna um i'm gonna show you where you can get the the ns uh nx usb loader it's it's pretty simple you can get it from like just a quick google shirt search it's um it's really just a GitHub page, and then obviously you Google uh, a woo a woo installer, and then that's pretty simple to install. And then from there, you really just um, you download and install Java because it it needs Java to um, to correctly work and all that. But um, oh boy, I'm I'm not even connected to the internet. I'm trying all this bullshit. Anyway, um, so basically there is a jar file you'll need for um, Java to connect to NX USB loader. And um, that's, that's all simple enough. It's, it's not really that big of a deal. You can, you can find the jar file pretty easily, but um, just in case you don't know where to look for it, I'll, I'll put the file in the link. Um, I'll, I'll link the files needed for all of this in the description down below and then as for like dbi and stuff like that that's all e uh simple to find but i'll also link it in the description just in case you don't want to go digging around on the internet but um yeah i i know that i know for some it may seem a little bit like oh like you already you already bought the game like it's on OFW why would you bother transferring it you can just do a lot more stuff with it on custom firmware you know it's it's not just about mods in like save files but um but it's also because i don't i don't want to have to switch back from um from the the custom firmware to the the original firmware because it's it's just a pain in the butt and it's it's probably gonna be better for my switch in the long run if I don't have to swap between the two all the damn time <laughs> um but yeah like I like I said these these files are very easy to find um oh god close out of that that's not necessary <laughs> Okay, anyway. Yeah, let's open NX USB loader. And um this this is pretty simple. It comes with an installer, so you're not gonna have to do much. Um basically uh if you wanna drag and drop it manually, you just put it in program files obviously and then you create a shortcut on your desktop. Whatever works. Um, okay, so let's launch into this. And then now you're going to see something like this. And you see up top where it says IP? That's where your switch goes. Or should I say the IP address for the switch specifically so it can communicate wirelessly? And then... Um, from that ripped games section, um, don't worry, it's they're all legal copies. I'm just transferring them, but um, you, you're gonna go ahead and um, click into NSB Loader, 
um, and select the, the game you want to transfer. In my case, it's Slender the Arrival. And the good thing about a Woo installer in NX USB loader is the fact that it um, does it all wirelessly. All right, as you can see, a Woo installer successfully installed Slender. So what you're going to want to do is quit out of this. I'd also like to add that um, you're transferring from original firmware to Emunant. But um, when you're using DBI, um, you know, to, um, to transfer it to PC, um, you're going to want to be in um, system CFW to transfer it. Um, because original firmware is where the game originated. System... Uh, CFW is so it can read it and transfer it to PC. And then Emunand is where you're going to be transferring it, where that's all your, you know, your hacky stuff lives. Um, the reason you don't transfer it to system CFW is mostly just because um, you can't really mo do mods and stuff on that. That's mostly just for... It's like a bridge between Emunand and um, original firmware. But yeah, as you can see, it works, and I hope this helped you.